Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we finish off Kevin Sullivan's um, Anne of Green Gables series. So, um, we covered Anne of Green Gables, which is very close to the book. We covered Anne the sequel, which is a combination of like three books. We covered Anne the continuing story, um, which came out in 2000 as opposed to Anne the sequel, which came out in 89. That doesn't follow any of the story. And now we're here with Anne of Green Gables, The New Beginning. Okay, so this is a completely brand, bland new screenplay. Now, as a film, this is actually very, very interesting on its own. If you take it apart and take it away from even the other three films, let alone the box, it's fine. It's an entertaining kind of little mystery of a woman looking back on her childhood past and some very interesting um, events. It has absolutely nothing to do with any of the other previous three films um, or the books whatsoever. There is no connection besides the Green Gables, Prince Edward Island, and children, the fact that she was married to Gilbert Bly. Um, and I find it very, very strange to see Barbara Hershey playing Anne Shirley. I am a big fan of the film Beaches, which is where I've seen Barbara Hershey. Um, and that's what I associate with her. She has dyed red hair. It's 1945, yet the aesthetic very much it's way it feels way too modern it, it the the clothing the fact that Anne spends most of the time in pants which is it's 1945 it's still a little weird women wearing pants even in 45 um particularly would yes it would be okay but it's still a little weird um it's still it's not as common and particularly someone of Anne's age considering um, she has adult children, she would be like in her 60s. I mean, I'm trying to think. She's still in her 20s when World War One happens. So, or possibly in her 30s. Uh, but still, it, 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 it's a little unusual. And again, Barbara Hershey, does not fit this image of Anne Shirley. Particularly when I have <laughs> um, the character of um, Hillary, or is it, yeah, I think it's Hillary, um, in, from Beaches, which of course was back in the 80s anyway. But still, um, that is not who's on the cover. So, and so let's look at this film as it, as it is because it is a good film if you don't take into account the other three films or Ella Montgomery's books as an original screenplay this is a very interesting story so we start off we have Anne she's trying to write a play we don't exactly know where she is I'm guessing she's where she's she's whether she's on Prince Edward Island or she's a different part of Prince Edward Island it's she's Charlottetown because Gilbert's grave is there. So, um, though it doesn't see constantly whether or not she's on a ship or not. So I have no idea where the heck she's at. Um, but she's trying to write a play. She's up, she, she's interacting with this gentleman. Let me see if I can pull up the actor here. Um, Jean Armstrong, who seems to be a very close friend of hers and she decides to go home. So she goes back to Green Gables that hasn't really been used. Diane, you get to Di two of Diane's, Diana's children um, who um, are basically trying to clean out the house. And they find these letters First, they're love letters between um, Marilla Cuthbert and 
John Bly, which was Gilbert's father. And at one point in time, they had, that was part of the books that they had been in love at one point in time. But then they find a letter from Anne's father, which is where you first get the, oh, this really has absolutely nothing to do with books because Anne's children both died when she was a baby. So Anne shows up shortly after and Diana's children's like, I thought your parents died when you were a baby. And now previously in the film, you see Anne kind of dozing on a beach and having a relationship with her mother, her mother being a school teacher and stuff. Um, so you get, she comes back to Green Gables and kind of you get the backstory of what happened in her real childhood, supposedly. Again, this is completely apart from the books. So Anne was like eight. Her father was working in a sawmill. Her mother was a teacher. They got in a fight. Um, they ended up in a in a pond all wet I don't know whether it was winter it must have been winter her mother ended up dying of pneumonia and she went to live with her mother's friend um Miss Thomas and her husband who was a doctor but there were some issues her husband was a um doctor and they had to leave town so she leaves Anne with an orphanage basically and then leaves and a van runs into this older gentleman who's being kept there and she befriends him he's the one who introduces her about kindred spirits and starts writing and she's very much abused here she eventually talks to the board about how the proprietors are um abusing the place and then she's going to be sent away and so what she does is she grabs her stuff and runs and then she runs into her mother's friend again miss thomas and runs with them and her husband apparently had been accused of theft and then killed by a train and then they had kind of lost everything and they were going to stay with um his mother who was very very wealthy who owned the sawmill and so Anne tags along and is eventually kicked out of the house and sent to work in the sawmill. And there's word of trying to unionize. She does see her father. Um, she interacts with a Native American woman um, who's part of the community who actually knows her father. And essentially you get this whole mystery of her father's part of this trying to unionize that Miss Thomas, who is played by um, Shirley MacLaine, who's the wealthy grandmother, um, is and the owner of the sawmill, and very much trying to hide the fact that things are chaotic and things are not doing well and that she's not paying her mortgages. So, and that uh, Anne's father is actually trying to get things unionized. Um, for a while, Anne is working in the sawmills and she's working, um, she's taken when there's, she sees her father injured, she's taken and she works um, at the cider house for a while. Then she goes back. Um, Violetta, which is uh, Mrs. Thomas's, and I'm gonna see if I can find, um, the name of Louisa Thomas um, is daughter Violetta. They're, they've lost the cat because they find the governess sneaking through papers. So Anne's able to come back because it was the governess who had got Anne kicked out in the first place for stealing. Um, and Anne forms a bond with um, Shirley McLean's character, whose name is Amelia Thomas, and she doesn't really understand what is going on. And she tries, I think, to convince her to talk to the union um, as this woman tries to smash the union. And then she ends up dying. Not Anne, obviously, but she, uh, Amelia's, um, ends up uh, being killed in a fire when she goes down to town. Um, and 
again, Louisa, Thomas is, as the next of kin, is left with a big mess. Um, and Anne is taken to live with the woman who eventually drops her off at the children's asylum before she's adopted by Marilla. Um, now, back to the future here, or the present. Anne is decided to not sell Green Gables. Originally she was going to do that, but she's decided not to. Um, Jean periodically shows up smoking in her house <laughs> and um, she's able to write a play and it goes on very well. She's able to renovate Green Gables, um, get it back into great condition. And the other thing that's going on is Dominic's been over, that's her son, so yes, it's still connected to the last one. She still adopted Dominic. She still has two children, though it says she has two daughters. Again, in the book, she has multiple sons. Uh, um, but again, this has absolutely nothing to do with the books and very, very little to do with the rest of the films. Moving on. <laughs> so, um, she's actually, she writes to her father. She kind of gets one letter back and then she never hears from him again. She gets a few letters from his um, housekeeper. And then finally she gets a letter from the letter saying he's died. So she comes to pay the respects. Turns out he married Louisa and um, he had a functioning store, which is kind of what the letter originally said when he wrote to Marilla um, all those years ago. And so she goes, she sees her father's body. It, everything um his wife had died previously years before him but they had a son together and of course her father adopted the three children so violetta she tries to go talk to violetta and they won't nothing to she wants nothing to do with her everything goes to violetta in the will so it's like what's going on with this son so anne's trying to kind of find her brother and so eventually she can't find anything and she goes so she goes home um, and they're celebrating, it looks like a birthday or a christening or something of probably one of her grandchildren. And um, Dominic comes home with his fiance, who's French, which kind of makes sense because technically Dominic was French. Um, obviously, she, he had, <laughs> she hadn't heard from him. He finally comes home um, from France. His arm is injured. Uh, again, this is still about maybe 1946. So. And then he says, it's like this man asked, he was looking for Green Gables and he kind of followed us here. It turns out this is her brother. So, and it kind of ends with Dominic's wedding and you don't really get any more information on her brother whose name, um, if I can find it here. See if I can find the name of the brother because he barely shows up and give me the entire cast find out who the heck is the actor who plays um let's see i can find out what the name of the brother is as i square down yeah, it shows um, Rilla, Franny, and then Dominic Blythe. Those are the children. Um, and looks like it doesn't give, um, I think her brother's name is Jim or Jack. Um, see if I can find here. Patricia Hamilton, who played Rachel Lynde, is in this. Apparently, her 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 son is playing plays the um, Walter Shirley, which is Anne's father. Um, you think I'd remember, considering I just watched this a little bit ago? But uh, it is not. Yeah, it's not telling me the name of the brother but again that's kind of where it ends it ends with this interesting conversation between Jean and D Dominic it's like your or uh that it's like your mother has this extraordinary life and she doesn't even know it and you see Anne basically surrounded by her family you have Diana and Fred and their family her two daughters Dominic 
and now this brother and of course grandchildren so and it's very very interesting ending it's very happy ending um so that's the end of this it's again as a film on its own it's fine it's very very interesting of course you never figure out how her brother found her you never see what the heck is going on with violetta what the heck happened to violetta's sister and brother or her his um it says three children but i believe they had or um her siblings um i believe she had four not three um nonetheless but again you, you never find out what happened with her father's life after that or why this brother wasn't named in the will or anything else so you have a bunch of uh leftover strings you don't know how gilbert died because again or, and where the heck Anne was because again they went to another they went to saint mary's uh which was another part of prince edward island <laughs> and that's where they go in the books that's where gilbert has a medical practice um that's the um hospital he works at that's an ingle side where they <coughs> um where they raise their family and again they do not have two daughters and an adoptive son they have like five kids i believe they have rilla and like that's two boys two girls three girls um i have to go back through the books uh yawning um we'll get there eventually um but uh, yeah it, it's it, it's interesting again as a film on its own it's kind of interesting though there's a lot of loose things like it it could have been longer there could have been more explanation so that's kind of where you get this you get this weird mystery thing um that has it's extremely disconnected from the story re disconnected from the books and um it's very very interesting it's a very very interesting film on its own i recommend it as long as you can separate your brain out from the other films and from the books if you can see this as a separate entity it's fine otherwise it's a bloody mess and that's what i went into look thinking about this it's like what the heck is going on and shirley's parents died when she was a baby and they were both bloody teachers there was and she was gone with this family and this family and she was taking care of kids until she was dropped off the asylum hmm. and then adopted by the cuffbirds on prince edward island and again in the books of course gilbert finishes his medical practice and they get married after he finished he basically does three years of medical school again this is the turn of the century and then they get married and have a life she actually has a stillborn in the books um a stillborn daughter first in the books um and then she has other children <laughs> so but that is it for this review um if you like what you see be sure to like and subscribe it's certainly interesting <laughs> it's, is it worth watching yeah probably but it, again separate it from the other stuff um after this the next media that you will see coming up friday will maybe re reviewing the first season of the road to avonlea which i have not completely watched yet and i will finish all seven and i will finish all the books so and then i'll go on to the boxcar children in the wings of fire uh, along with a variety of other things it is however almost 8 30 so i'm not going to go into what those other things are uh, so like and subscribe leave a positive comment if you have one thank you